Hello, this is Tam the Tam VOTC channel. We're going to, well, we're going to talk about some We're going to talk about some Dark Souls lore. Uh, now a couple of things before I start this. Uh, spoiler alert. And second off, I've never made a uh, lore uh, video, so this isn't like literal lore. This is like theories. So once again, keep in mind that I'm not saying these are positive. These are hunches, basically. Big ones, but hunches. <laughs> so we're going to... I'm going to talk about... I'm farming some stuff here, so don't mind that. We're going to talk about the Soul of Cinder today. He's at the very end. He's the last boss battle of Dark Souls uh, 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I might talk about a few, like, side things, too. But I want to get into this. Now, uh, there's there's guesses to who the Soul of Cinder might be. And uh, one thing is that, like most of these bosses, let's take, for example... Uh, there's the old Demon King. I think he's like a... Especially with how the area is designed with all the dead Stray and Capra and Taurus demons all over the place. Uh, it could be a representation. Uh, the old Demon King could be a reincarnated version or something of the old Iron King. And like the Bed of Chaos, the old Chaos that we've known the Ivory King to be uh, taken over by. So it might have returned. And that's like a form of both of them, especially since they take place in a very like lava-like area. So that's that's possible. Uh, there's also uh, Warlorn is his name. Is it? Hold on. Wolnir. Wolnir. Okay, I'm thinking wrong. Sorry. Wolnir, the the uh, king of the underworld. He wasn't a very hard boss. But uh, that he could possibly be a reincarnated version of uh, maybe Gravelord Nido. And uh, Gravelord Nido's reincarnated version in the second game was possibly the... Uh, the skeleton kings or skeleton lords but uh who knows uh oh, oh and the rotten i forgot about the rotten where the reincarnated form since they were both basically lovers should have probably latched on part of uh the lost sinner's soul to the old iron king too so that's possible that they could be one now and since the lost sinner did have that bug that looked like the bed of chaos and you're underneath the big tree like monster uh the bed of chaos itself or whatever is down there as a big as a little bug that's killed easily one of the dumbest bosses in the soul series soul series but um there's a lot of, like, like they come back. It's kind of like Lord Voldemort always coming back. Where, uh... Lord Voldemort will take over, like, a new body, like Professor Quirrell in the first one. Then he has a Tom Riddle version of his younger self body. And then, uh... He has... He tries to bring back his body in the fourth one, which he succeeds. But he's had several bodies, is what I'm getting at. So it's sort of the same thing here, where, uh, as well as, like, Manus came back in the body or form of what Nishandra became. Or, uh, thing. So, who's the soul of Cinder, then? Well, the one theory is that he could be a part or a latched-on part of the soul of, uh... Lord Gwen, the possibly, I think he was the original Lord of Cinder, and he was the first one to kindle the fl the fire to keep it going, but he, uh, oh, they're fighting over there, but, uh, they're, that he paid the price of hollowing just like how Lord Vendrick did. Um, there's a lot of, like, there's, like, a lot more things, especially weapons, even, like that Storm Sword uh, in this game. Yeah, 
storm ruler weapon, which is similar to that where you fight those like stingrays that fly through the hair, as I des I describe them as, in Demon Souls. That's uh, a weapon used in that part. It's probably not exactly the same, but it works the same. And I I feel like it's in, in a way they're trying, even though you could argue that they're not, because patches and the Moonlight Greatsword is always in everything, that uh, they're trying to connect that Demon Souls and Dark Souls are part of the same universe, just take place in different times. And seeing that not only is Dark Souls like a time-traveling game almost, but also a game where it takes place in different dimensions too. Or different worlds so there's a lot to that the uh, other guess for who like the soul ascender um well he has the fighting style later he's a little different he has like a this uh wave attack that he does combo or whatever that's similar to how uh, maria from the old hunters dlc does where she'll uh buff herself up and have longer range and the shape of like blood and flames that reach farther kind of like what he, he does with his combos and attacks but uh yeah he's got a lot of different move sets the other guess is he could be your original character from the very first game a uh, couple of reasons uh if you read the description of whoops why did i do that if you read the description i think it says the same for all of these is it says Helm of the Soul of Cinder, a deif defec I don't know manifestation. Sorry for anything that I pronounce wrong. Of the Lord's Cinder, who linked the first flame. It resembles a knight's helm, but bears hideous burns and contortions. A mishappen crown can be seen upon its rear. It exists as a symbol of the great lords and the noble act of linking the fire, though it is no more than an empty husk. So, um, there's a couple of things, like it says, who linked the first flame. Uh, this could, like, the Soul of Cinder could be all the lords combined into one, but there's a couple of things that make me think that he might be your character, because in some, some of the cutscenes they show of him, they show him traveling kind of like your character would and he's like dragging a body and he puts the sword through it um and a lot of people probably hunched that this was going to be a starting arbor set and he's put on like tons of merchandise they made a statue they made a little pop figurine it was like hinted that he was like just your main character because the last time they made a statue it was just of an armor set that your main character would wear. It wasn't an actual boss. But you find out this is an actual boss, which actually makes the statue a lot cooler. Um, but he's like wielding different swords too. In each of those statues he has like a short sword or something uh, that he wields with the pop figure and in some of the posters or pictures. And then he's got something like like uh has a curved hilt like that oh there it is bastard sword okay uh so something like that i've seen him wield that and i've seen him in his statue form he wields two scimitars he's do with do wielding scimitars uh so that's that's a thing and your character would your character would wield different weapons on his adventure and seeing that he's been outside of the area. I also feel like the kiln of the first plane is not only the first place that uh, Gwen was at, but who was the last person alive in the kiln of the first flame? That was your character. So how could it be Gwen? Uh, and they're probably going off of the sacrifice yourself to the flames. What if you didn't, because Gwen sacrificed himself to the flames, and he didn't die, he just hollowed forever. That could have been the same with your character. The other thing that makes me guess that he's probably not your main character is your character was uh, like a dwarf or the pig, and one, a pygmy. So your character's shorter, and basically people like Gwen, for some reason, is a regular-sized human, which is weird. Um... They feel like giants, but he could have like he could have merged with Gwen's soul, and uh, he could have even taken up 
the crown because he's sort of got like a crown shape going into his armor. You can also tell that his armor is becoming very decaying and husk-like, just like uh, Gwen did and your character possibly did too, sacrificing himself. And that's probably the most likely ending because if you see what the darkness does when you uh, let the darkness take over the world, there's almost nothingness. <laughs> so that's that's probably not the ending they're going with in Dark Souls 1. But um, the other thing is the first part of his fighting style, his first phase, uh, could be or like a representation of the many different uh, sets or classes that you could choose at the start of the game, like be a sorcerer or a pyromancer or uh, so a cleric or something who casts miracles. He can heal himself using a miracle great heal or something. He can also uh, change his sword into different weapons. He uses like almost a lance slash spear design look you know, like combat set with his weapon then like curved great sword he does that uh that sort of backflip jump that you can do with lighter armor and a weapon with uh or a certain ring on uh to change your your sort of roll and then he also switches to like a great sword and a a straight sword like kind of look and a staff so he has many different like move sets and looks and he uses different kind of sorceries and pyromancies and different type of uh, like weapon and uh, different types of weapons he changes the bonfire sword into different weapons and he could have became more powerful just through uh, that alone because and he could have like the representation of both the music playing and him fighting like Gwen is uh, your hollowed self got to see G Gwen. He was the last one to see Gwen in his fight style, unless he had Solaire with you. But Solaire is possibly not in the picture because Solaire was only there as a summon. He wasn't actually in the place at the time. So he, so uh, your character probably like remembered his move set or copied it and used it to his advantage, but also had his own, like, moves added to it. It would probably also, I'm not saying this is, like, this is absolutely certain. Once again, uh, it's probably something else. But I think it would make for a cool ending if that was your character, because that would be the plot twist. You were stopping your character because... Maybe your character was do. Oh, my brother's sending an invite. He must be back. Um, so I'll try and get through this quick. So your character possibly... Uh, your character... How, how do I say it? Uh, your character is... Pro it's like a representation of your character. You think that you're doing something right in the end of Dark Souls. Once again, giving you the different choices or options of different branching endings. But just your other character, who could also mean bad, comes over to not only end your misery and the fact that the world is crumbling around him. He's not really taking care of the world in this stat right now. His status. But, um... That he could be doing something potentially wrong or f harmful or effective to the world around him, and you have you have to stop yourself because uh, your other self, this is where it gets confusing, is doesn't know that he's doing something wrong, and you could be potentially be uh, potentially be a dangerous to yourself. <laughs> it's a lot of weird stuff to go through but it's it seems like a, a better ending i don't know how else to end dark souls uh they go with whatever ending but that's like a theory or a thought i have sort of on it and i i kind of like it because it, you're fighting yourself and it's kind of like a cool little nod to your old self especially since the armor is described as knight armor and being the last one to uh kindle the flame uh to light the fire and your character was the last one alive at the end of Dark Souls 1 and since this is like takes place 
pretty much in the same place due to Erna Orlando. Uh, as well as we can't wait for the DLC that shows more. That it could most likely be your character in the future. And this is how he's developed and become. So thank you very much for listening. I have more thoughts and theories through this. If you want to ask questions below, please let me know. But please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next